Throughout the history, humanity has undertaken monumental projects, ranging from ancient marvels like pyramids, From pyramids to contemporary super tall skyscrapers. For a considerable period, the Empire State Building held the title of the world's tallest building. But since 2010, a new record holder has graced the skyline of the United Arab Emirates in Dubai. In the past, civilizations showed their strength through military or with the construction of towering structures. However, 21st century marks departure from this trend. My personal view is that the new generations seems less concerned about the height of the building and more focused on entrepreneurship and value creativity. They seek opportunities for self-expression, innovation, and creating meaningful impact through their works. Welcome back everyone. In this episode, we'll be revealing the details of the world's second tallest architectural masterpiece, Merdeka 118. Now let's start with the construction part. Later towards the end of this video, we will be talking about more about architectural philosophy of this project. The construction starts in 2014. After preparation of the site, hundreds of thousands of tons of earth digging starts. Engineers dig down foundation of 200 feet tall piles into the ground, capping them with 12 foot thick concrete raft to support the tower above the ground. Most of the time, everyone believes that piling is until bedrock, and when they reach the bedrock, they stop piling. In Malaysia, we don't have that. In Kuala Lumpur, where two rivers converge and literally means the earth is muddy, in Kuala Lumpur, bedrock can be below. 300 feet deep or more. To solve this complex issue, first, trench cutters slice 3 feet thick channel to create a circle with 260 feet across. After workers fill the channel with the concrete, creating a huge containing wall and sink 137 concrete columns known as piles 200 feet down into the ground, pack it as close together as possible for maximum support. Next, diggers excavate down to reveal the piles and iron workers stitch them together with 300 mile of steel rebar, then cover it with 45,000 tons of concrete. When it dries, the ultra-strong foundation should support the huge tower. Ok, here we need to mention that this project didn't just break records, it introduced innovations. Arup, the structure engineering company, 
along with the contractor SUGV developed a high performance concrete called HPC with a record breaking pumpability, reducing environmental impact and construction cost. This unique material enabled to build it fast and strong and mostly all concrete pouring controlled strictly to meet requirements. Each truck was diagnosed and only after that they allowed to pour the concrete. If the concrete doesn't meet the required temperature, then they apply nitrogen to cool the concrete. Now let's talk about concrete form works. To cast a single level of a core, workers build mold form wooden panels and fill it with the concrete. Traditionally, they would then remove the panels, build new scaffolding and then lift the molds back up. But for a building this tall, that would take years to complete. Instead, engineers developed rail steel formwork that bolted to the core and support a giant movable platform that carries the mold sections. As it climbs to the rails, workers lock the molds with the wooden panels together. After pouring concrete, they release them once the concrete is set. Then, hydraulics push the platform upward without effort, transporting the steel formworks and all required equipment up to the tower. This clever system means that the team can power up adding each new level in only 5 days. Another important aspect in building skyscrapers is that the concrete naturally wants to twist or most of the time naturally leans. To prevent this, engineers at 14th level, they tie the central core to the 8 giant concrete columns that surrounds the tower. During design stage, engineers insert giant pieces of steel into the concrete columns at 3 key levels. After they connect them to the core with the enormous diagonal arms called outriggers. This system ties the columns and the core together, allowing them to support each other and move as one for extra stability. Engineers encircle the same levels with the huge steel trusses that grip the tower like a series of belt, making it strong enough to extend tower high into the clouds. The outriggers are so large that the team has to crane them up in a separate pieces and weld them together after they've been installed. To make construction go smoothly, all the workers rely on steady stream of materials, including hundreds of tons of steel each week, keeping this building supplied with the steel, with the concrete and with the sand. It's a daily task of bringing materials in to keep the building fed and the only way to get all these materials to lift up to the top is by lifting them with the help of these mammoth cranes. These mammoth cranes situated on top of the building. The tower cranes for any kind of high rise are like a fuel for building. The tower cranes are what get materials up to the highest parts of the building. These cranes have another clever design feature that lets them to stay one step above the rise from the concrete. Each tower crane can jump itself, so it only needs itself to move itself up. The skyscraper cranes are attached to the concrete core with the two giant steel brackets. As Tim builds the core higher and higher, the cranes have to move upper. The cranes metal feet fixed onto the super strong ladder. 
hydraulic press raises the crane up when it reaches to the limit. Then the second set of the feet catches onto the ladder. The hydraulic piston resets and pushes off again by climbing up higher every two foot. The cranes stay ahead of the team below and it takes only three hours for climbing the crane to reach the safety of the next level. One major showpiece of the tower's design is the atrium of enormous structure at the building's entrance. The volume of its atrium is so high designed to give the visitors the feeling of its grandness. Volume of the atrium is to do with the scale of the building. We're standing underneath one of the tallest buildings in the world. This will be 450 high hollow shell of steel and glass. What is that? It's a huge space. As you walk into the entrance of the building, you can look all the way up, up to 44 floors. Now let's talk about architectural philosophy of architects behind this project. Architect of this project is Fender Katsalidis, an Australian architectural company. buildings in Kuala Lumpur have been given a facelift before the celebrations marking the independence of the Federation of Malaya. The name Merdeka means independence in Malay, inspired by its location near to Stadium Merdeka. Designed to mimic Tunku Abdul Rahman's iconic Merdeka proclamation in 1957, the building boasts diamond shaped glass facades symbolizing Malaysia's diversity. As construction progresses towards the estimated completion in 2024, Merdeka 118 to become the second tallest building globally and the pride of Southeast Asia. As I mentioned earlier, new generation is not really concerned about competing architectural high-rise structures, but I believe that this skyscraper will remain as iconic masterpiece of Malaysia for centuries. If you enjoyed this journey into the architectural wonders, stay tuned with us. Thanks for watching. <laughs>